Uh, Marcus Conti reporting, man. I am very proud right now to know these two fine individuals. I want to do a, a little bit of a deep dive into this very important lawsuit that has just uh, finalized. George uh, D. George Swaggart versus Jason Goodman, South, Southern District of New York, 18 CV 8653. This is big, right? I wanted. I felt like I didn't do it justice walking around in the park. But what I've done is I've summarized it so that we can all enjoy it together because there is precedence. And we have to thank uh, George uh, D. George Schwagart and Mr. Jason Goodman for setting a precedence on YouTube, pre a precedence for how individuals are supposed to behave, how they're supposed to treat each other, and what is what is considered offensive and what is considered a RICO charge and, and all of these things that they uncovered for us with David Schwager with his, his very fine educational uh, uh, work that he has done. So we give George a <laughs> Got to give Dave a hand and for, and for Jason Goodman for fighting back. He, he fought a, a hell of a fight, really. I mean, he's, I'm privileged. I'm honored. I, you know how honored I am to know these, these two individuals, these two, these two guys, right? It's just amazing. So to both of you, my heart, my heart is, goes out to you guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So let's look. Let's have a look. So here is the original case, right? This is the, this is the difficult and hard one to read with all the, with all the fancy uh, uh, stuff in it by the judge, like legal stuff. But this is the... The actual uh, judgment, right? A judgment, a summary judgment handed down by a federal judge. Wow, I thought we were just playing on YouTube, man. This shit is crazy, man. I thought it was just, I thought it was just like, like I didn't know that we were getting getting into something that would set precedence on the internet. I had no idea, man. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm besides myself. I'm really, I really am. So let's look. So, so we'll title this one "Fun with with the uh, LARP lawsuit." Uh, uh, George uh, George Schwagger or David Schwagger, whatever his name is, and Mr. Jason Goodman, the 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 Umbrella Man. Uh, okay, so 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 this is the judge's words in the in the uh, words of the judge. And what is what is the judge's name? Valerie Caprione. Valerie Caprione. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. The very honorable Valerie Caprione has has decided, has looked at all the evidence in this case, because we were really interested. I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's a murder for hire in this, there's, there's RICO charges. Are we, are we, are we really in that deep in our, in our, in our YouTube, uh, uh, lives? I, I didn't, I didn't think so. I was hoping that someone would, you know, clear it up for me. So let's find out what the judge said. So, so again, as you know, this is a sidebar to the, coverage I did in the park the other day, but I, I didn't feel like I did it justice because there's a lot of zingers in here. There's a lot of really, really good information in here. So we need to, we need to flush it out. So the judge says, this is a frivolous dispute between two litigants whose volum voluminous court filings rehash their incomprehensible and illegal, <laughs> let's start again. This is a frivolous dispute between two litigants whose voluminous court filings rehashed their incomprehensible and illogical online conspiracy theories. <laughs> wow, that's fucking good, man. It's precedence, right? We set precedence. Right? So, all told, the parties filed two filed twenty frivolous motions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh, man. It's funny, though. 20 frivolous motions. The, the word frivolous is going to come up a whole lot. Motions. Plaintiff re-encounts a convoluted history of defendant. An operator. Plaintiff is George Schwaggart. George D. David G. Schwaggart, whatever his name is, right? Dave Atkin, whoever he calls himself these days. Plaintiff, uh, Prepper Kitty. Right? And Jason Goodman, Mr. Jason Goodman. Uh, so plaintiff reencounts. Plaintiff is is Schwager and defendant is Goodman. Plaintiff recounts a convoluted history of defendant, an operator of a YouTube channel. I'm an operator of a YouTube channel, <laughs> accusing plaintiff of committing wildly implausible acts, 
on the basis of defendants' facially ridiculous statements on YouTube, which include, among other things, an accusation that the plaintiff used a microwave weapon to explode someone's lung, and the defendant has influence over the FBI, plaintiff, as a, as a private citizen, now seeks to impose civil and criminal liability on defendant for allegedly participating in a racketeering organization and violating numerous federal, state, criminal laws. Wow, oh my God. He's, but it's frivolous, right? Fact. Fact. Up of this finding of fact by the judge. A, f- a private citizen may not prosecute a criminal act in federal court. Ah, oh, shit. So what are we doing? Why is there criminal charges, Schwaggert? Why is there criminal charges? Federal prosecutors have discerned this discretion to determine whether to bring a criminal action, and private individuals cannot d- displace the attorney general by bringing civil actions to enforce the criminal laws of the United States. The court may also dismiss a complaint if the action is frivolous. <laughs> Even if the even if the plaintiff has paid his fee, ah, interesting, really interesting. I, I it's good information. It's very educational for in case it ever has to happen to me. Plaintiff moved to disqualify the undersigner, the judge. <laughs> the plaintiff moved to disqualify the judge. Such conspiratorial speculation, applying a standard that could lead to the disqualification of virtually every judge in the district may be fitting for a YouTube comments section, <laughs> but is not sufficient to cause the recusal of a judge. Oh, man, see, we learned something, man. We learned something. Right, so the, so, so what, he's, what she's saying in English is that the comments are not a federal court. Right, we thought it was, and we thought all this, all this commenting back and forth is like it could be presented in a federal court. No, she's fucking pissing on you, right? Pissing on us, excuse me. In this case, the overwhelming majority of plaintiff's allegations of wire fraud, witness tampering, and murder for hire, although RICO predicates, do not pertain to him or to his business or property. Wow. So why is, why is Schwager filing a, a lawsuit against, against Goodman if, in the, words of the, in, in the words of the judge, do not pertain to him or to his business? Wow. So I guess that's why it's frivolous, right? Because it's just, it, it doesn't, it's not, he's not in, involved, according to, the, according to the lawsuit. Counts 1, 3, and 10 of the amended complaint allege that the defendant defrauded individuals who donated to defendant or to his purported entity, but do not allege that plaintiff was a donor, lost any property, or was otherwise harmed in any way by defendant's alleged unlawful fundraising. Oh, damn. So, Dave, I, I guess, you know, Schwagger should have given at least at least a dollar, right? So you could claim a dollar damage. Maybe you would have made a dollar, you know, fucking dollar. Dollar's a dollar, bro. Count two alleges that defendant purported a bomb hoax that temporarily shut down a port in, in South Carolina, but there is no suggestion that the hoax injured plaintiff's property or business. <laughs> That's the port of Charleston. I remember that. I remember watching. I remember watching uh, uh, George George Webb and Jason Goodman uh, uh, call in a bomb hoax. I remember that. George alcohol. George drinking. George fucking Jason on his couch. Oh, it was fucking crazy. It was crazy days, man. This shit was fucking nuts, man. Right? And now it's two years later, and and this Mr. Schwaggart is bringing this bringing this up in a civil court. Why? For what? What is he doing? Why? Court, uh, count five alleges a murder for hire <laughs> by plaintiff uh, is not, but plaintiff is not the subject of the alleged plot, nor is there any allegation that the plot harmed him in any way. Oh, man. So, wow, you can't file a lawsuit if it doesn't pertain to you? <laughs> I guess not. Count eight alleges Wire, wire fraud based on defendant's purported misuse of personally identifying information. But plaintiff does not allege that his own personal information was misused or that any misuse affected his business or property. Damn. So, wow, that's just kind of like, like you have to, I guess you got to be damaged when you file a lawsuit. You have to actually have suffered some kind of damage. That makes sense to me. Plaintiff appears to regard himself as a roving knight in shining armor, 
intent on vindicating through this lawsuit the right of anyone harmed by defendant's nonsensical ranting. <laughs> Unfortunately for plaintiff, this is not the function of the civil RICO statue. <laughs> nonsensical ranting. Wow, defendant. Wow, that, that puts... Now we have precedence for, for Jason Goodman. Nonsensical ranting. Wow. And plaintiff. Wow, Schwaggert is now the uh, uh, in the record... Uh, is a roving knight, a roving knight in shining armor. <laughs> man, this is funny. The fucking shit is crazy, man. I gotta take a fucking drink, man. This shit, man. Oh, God damn. Give these fucking judge a hand, man. This is some entertaining stuff, man. Thank you, guys. Again, really, this is really, this is really good stuff, man. Count six of the amended complaint perhaps comes closest to pleading uh, uh, an injury, but is still far afield. Ah, oh, damn, fucking w at least one. The judge couldn't give you at least one, but they're all <laughs> one. Five are frivolous and one is uh, uh, still far afield. Anyway, man, maybe next time, maybe next time. Uh, accounts, in count six, plaintiff alleges wire fraud based on a YouTube video in which defendant spins a crackpot theory about plaintiff surveilling an individual named Quinn Michaels and using a microwave weapon that causes Michaels to suffer a, quote, explosion of a blurb, blurb attached to his lung. <laughs> plaintiff claims that the video injured his professional reputation. Oh, did it? As stated above, a loss of professional opportunities is generally not actionable um, under RICO. Fucking damn. Damn. I thought you had him there, man, Schwagger. I thought you had him. Moreover, plaintiff has not alleged a single business opportunity that was or may be lost as a result. Nor has plaintiff alleged how anyone has or could possibly credit defendant's outlandish conspiracy theory and rely on it to deny plaintiff's professional opportunity. <laughs> no, plaintiff, possibly, who could possibly credit defendant's outlandish conspiracy theory? Ah, that's the, the essence of crowdsource the truth. Who could, who could actually believe it? Who believes it? God damn it. Ah, so what else? What else? Give the judge another hand, man. Take another drink. Oh, in response to the court's order to show cause, plaintiff alleged that alleged other injuries that defendant caused, such as misusing plaintiff's photographs on defendant's merchandise. Ooh. While defendant of another's likeness may be a tort uh, or civil violation, it is not it is not predicate, uh, it's not a predicate offense in a RICO purpose. Even if misuse, misuse of plaintiff's photograph, plaintiff has not alleged how that action injured him, his business, or his property. <laughs> so, uh, so you can use somebody's stuff. How does it injure you? For why? What? Where? Where? You, because you were. I think that was the coffee cup incident. Ah, uh, Jason Goodman put 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 Schwagger on the coffee cup, and Schwagger got his feelings hurt. <laughs> oh, Dave. Dave's got his feelings hurt, man. This fucking this guy's a very sensitive man. He's a very sensitive man. Let's give Dave Dave Schwagger a hand. <laughs> the the court further notes that the alleged conduct is so facially implausible <laughs> that the plaintiff has not alleged that defendant's wrongful conduct actually occurred. <laughs> Uh, defendant's purported conduct consists of improperly influencing FBI agents in the New York field office and co-opting FBI resources to target and retaliate against the plaintiff. Proof, plaintiff cites, defendant's claim that he was obtaining exculpatory evidence against plaintiff from unnamed law enforcement contacts. Ah, the conspiracy. Uh, as further proof, Plaintiff cites a series of tweets posted by a non-party, Seth Abr Abramson, who apparently also has a conspiracy theory about the FBI. <laughs> the, the basis of Abraham's claim, which are incomprehensible as presented, is unknown. The plaintiff does not allege that Abraham's, Abraham's statements are actually true. 
choosing instead to note that Abraham has a large Twitter following. <laughs> oh, man. Right? So Twitter following is, is proof. Twitter following, proof. I guess not. I guess not. We're setting precedents here, man. Dave Acton is setting <laughs> precedents. In relation to plaintiff's civil rights conspiracy claims, <clears throat> it alleges that a particular person is a compromised FBI agent working with defendant to gather incriminating evidence about plaintiff. Plaintiff further alleges that defendant's actions have harmed plaintiff's ability to obtain a government clearance. Any potential impact of defendant's actions on plaintiff's prospects to obtain a security clearance is too speculative of an injury. Fucking damn, you missed again. God damn it. This judge is not giving you anything, man. He has not alleged, Schrager has not alleged that he intends to seek or has sought or been denied a government clearance, nor has he explained how or why the FBI, if it were to conduct a formal background, background check, would be misled about his trustworthiness by someone on YouTube spouting crazy conspiracy theories. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Damn, this judge is funny, man. She's fucking this is crazy, man. Oh, we got one more page. Right, one more page. Let's go. Goodman asserts that Schwaggard is part of an organized campaign that is engaged in wanton and willful torturous interference, defamation, slander, harassment, invasion of privacy, infringement of the First Amendment rights, menacing and stalking. Wow, fucking damn, George Jason Goodman is on the ball calling it out. So what did he, what did he say? Apart from those conclusory statements, Goodman has not set forth any facts to support his claims. Oh, man, I guess we give one to Schwager. <laughs> it was a swing and a miss, you know what I mean? Like he tried, at least he tried. Both parties are advised that they are proceeding in a federal court. Ah, the judge is, the judge is, judge is schooling, schooling. Now the judge will school. Both, both parties are advised that they are proceeding in a federal court, not YouTube. Ah, so there's a different standard in court than there is on YouTube. Interesting. And are therefore warned, <laughs> the, the W word, warned not to waste judicial resources with the filing of frivolous claims or motions. Wow, what a fucking slap that was, man. It's like a... That's a fucking bad. That's a bitch slap right there, man. Fucking both parties are advised. Fucking bitch slap. Oh, man. This judge's not playing games, man. I like to meet her one day. I bet she's sexy. Get a sexy job. <laughs> Conclusion. Based on the foregoing reasons, plaintiff's motion to disqualify the undersigner is denied. Well, that's it. Plaintiff's amended complaint is hereby dismissed. The court further denies as mute all remaining open motions. <laughs> the clerk of the court is, is respectively uh, directed to terminate all pending motions in this matter. Oh, damn. So that's it, man. It's over. Let's give a big round of applause. Big... A little round of applause. Wow, so that was, that was pretty heavy, right? So oh, there's more. Wait a second. Because plaintiff may be able to plead a civil copyright claim or invoke the court's diversity di jurisdiction by proceeding only against parties as whom there is diversity of citizenship, the court grants plaintiff <laughs> diversity of citizenship. What the fuck are you talking about? So if, if, if one of them is, is not diverse in their citizenship, then the plaintiff can refile. <laughs> The court grant, that's great, man. That's good fucking words, man. God damn, this shit is great. The court grants plaintiff leave to refile within 21 days of the date of this order. The court, the court cautions plaintiff not that his second amended complaint can be dismissed as frivolous and he may be subject to sanctions. Oh, damn, this is going to be painful, man. The fucking, if I bet you Schwagart... I bet if Schwager refiles, man, with this judge, as if, he, if, let me read it again, the court cautions plaintiff that his second amended complaint can be dismissed as frivolous and he may be subject to the sanction if he refiles a complaint in substantially the same order. 
Oh, man. Fucking, what do you do there? If you file again, you bang, you get slapped. You get bitch slapped. You get fucking bitch slapped by the judge, man. You may get stuck paying 100 grand, too. You may get stuck paying an hourly fee to the, to the court for wasting everybody's fucking time and energy and taxpayer money. What a fucking waste of time. God damn it, these guys. Uh, so... If no Second Amendment is uh, amend, if no Second Amend complaint is filed by September 10, 2019, this case will be immediately dismissed. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, legal advice. I would, I would, I, I think, I think Schwager should try to fight it because, is because hey, you could probably convince this judge that you're not a frivolous, you know, frivolous fr- uh, litig- litigant that you're just, you know, you're just a little misguided. Uh, you could probably win. I think you should try. The court certifies that any appeal from this, this is a final statement. The court certifies that any appeal, <laughs> as if the bitch slap wasn't bitchy enough, wasn't it? If you file an appeal, the court certifies that any appeal from this order would not be taken in good faith and therefore is forma paparis status is denied for the purpose of an appeal. <laughs> So it's suggesting that that Schwaggart and 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 uh, the other one Goodman may have filed as poor people, right? That's a form of purpose. It's Latin for a poor person, right? So what the judge is saying that this that she's already disqualifying that status of of if if Schwaggart appeals or Goodman appeals, that the that neither one of them. Could could uh, claim to be poor person and man is that shit going to get expensive? Is basically what she's saying. So thank you very much. Signed Valerie Capleon. Valerie Capleon. Wow. I hope that was educational because that's what this is all about. I Man, we want to know right because the internet is the wild west, right? And we just saw a very uh, a very interesting case where where two litigants go head to head. And basically, a judge says everything they're saying is frivolous. That they're just two boneheads with a, with a beef against each other that can't can't communicate. Right? They they've lost the ability to talk to each other. One is butthurt. One is is very sensitive, oversensitive, jealous of his brother, maybe, or I don't know. Maybe he's a failed actor, or whatever his life circumstance. Maybe he's got a couple of cat ladies turned him down. Whatever his whatever his 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 reasoning to be so bitter as to sue someone. For, for online chatter. And the other guy, the guy that goes around, the Goodman guy, that goes around swinging umbrellas in people's faces and, and calling their employment. Now, I thought, I also heard through the grapevine that Jason Goodman contacted Schwaggert's uh, private, you know, private stuff, called his job, called his, his community. How come, I didn't see that in the, in the, did I miss it? How come I didn't see that inside of the uh, lawsuit? How come Schwaggert didn't mention that Goodman... Uh, tried to interfere with his life. In fact, he didn't. He failed to do that at all. So maybe he made that up. Is that just a lie that Schwaggard made up over the years? Uh, but anyway, it's a fascinating story, man. Thank you, guys. I want to. I really. I mean, I, I'm. I am honored. I am honored to know these two. These two individuals that have 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 entertained us now for over a year with this ridiculous, frivolous nonsense. Right and showed us all just how ridiculous and frivolous and how nonsensical the whole thing really is. So, Marcus Conti reporting. I am an investigative journalist here on YouTube, and uh, if you'd like to to support this cause, kindly become a Patreon of this channel, and we can continue to cover these fine stories. Marcus Conti reporting.